All right, hey guys, good morning. Thanks for joining us again. We're out uh, fishing a small coastal river on the Oregon coast with Nick, Dave, and myself. Um, Dave's with uh, Coastal Fishing. Coastal Fishing Adventures. And uh, we're going to do a float today. We're going to do a little bit of everything. We're going to bead fish. We're going to do some uh, yarnies. We're going to do a little bit of everything. We're going to do uh, mainly focus on jig and bobbers and beads, probably, huh? Yeah, low clear water. Yeah, low clear water. It's been about a couple of days of, of uh, you know, real clear skies, no rain. So we're looking forward to a fun trip, huh? Yeah. All right, let's get after it. Tim, what's going on here? First fish of the morning. Yep, just got a little, looks like this one's got a little color on it, but you know, gotta he's, get the day started somewhere. He's well aged. Yes, he's like And that was, uh, that was on a, you're using a bead, right? <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave does his own beads. So this is kind of a, what color would you call this, Dave? Uh, just a light pink. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> the bobber and it's been great. <laughs> well, David and Tim are going to show us the three different techniques um, we'll be using today. So as everybody knows, I like to do uh, drift fishing quite a bit. So I've got a nine and a half foot uh, Douglas X matrix rod with just a about a five bead slinky. Obviously that can vary. With I've been bouncing around all day between the uh, depths of the runs. And I'm using just a yarny because this water's got some greened out areas. And I just put a little bit of shrimp on there as a, Dave, Dave likes to put eggs on his yarnies as well. That's another real common thing. But this is, this is one, even though low and clear, we still, I do quite a bit of the drift fishing. And Dave will show you kind of what his bead rig is. Yeah. So I run usually smaller beads when it's clear, but I usually run, you know, a gap, two, three fingers, and then whatever bead you decide, up to up five, six feet a liter. And then usually in the center, I split it to where I'll put a, a barrel swivel in split shot and then run heavier liter above just so that you have a breaking point so you don't lose the whole thing. And then I run like an inline on top on a sliding bobber. And in heavier water, I'll go up to like a half ounce to get it down, you know, to cut the current. And then you just adjust, adjust your bobber stop for the depth of the hole. And then the other one. And then this is, this is kind of one of Nick's specialties. He likes to run just a straight, uh, he likes to run the mono with a, uh, like a nightmare pattern jig or you know whatever your uh, red with a black head is real good in low water low clear water like we have today um, and then just uh, one of the nice light super light floats like this easily adjustable um, it's a great little rig Nick does really well on it so those are the three rigs we've been using most of the day today and uh, I feel like we're covering all situations pretty well. So stay, stay tuned and we'll bring you some more action. So we wanted to explain to you part of the thing I, that I like about drift fishing quite a bit is in the low clear water, you get the fish will suck up tight in this, in this chop and it's very difficult to get some, some types of presentations to them. But you can, you can get it in there at the head of the ripple and bounce it through there really nice with drift gear and they'll literally they'll suck right up into this chop uh, especially if there's any pressure on the river we've had a few boats with us today um, this is a very high percentage hole it's not very big you got to be able to get it right in there and get it down to the bottom quickly so you'll notice that a lot of the times when i'm doing it i will throw it out and I'll lift my rod up quite high like that so I can get that weight down really quickly on the bottom and then I can feel it all the way through there and it gives it a really nice presentation that a lot of guys pass up 
because it's a little more difficult or they don't feel like they can get a light jig down in that water very well. But uh, it's a really high percentage spot in low clear water to make sure it's one of the advantages of drift fishing is to be able to work this high choppy water like this at the head of a run. Okay, Dave's gonna show us the versatility of this uh, bead rig. They, you can kind of fish them in all different types of water types. Yeah. Yeah, so like I guide full time, so this is an easy rig for my clients to use because with your bobber stop on your main line, with just, you know, a couple feet of adjustment, I can fish anywhere from four or five feet of water to six or eight feet of water. And, you know, like a bead, it just simulates an egg that's, you know, rolling down the river and still it just naturally gravitates towards it. The biggest thing with these, especially in clear waters, once you make your cast, you don't want to, you don't want to pull on it too much because that bead doesn't have a lot of weight. So anytime your bobber's dragging or if you're holding back on it, that bead comes up off the bottom really easy. So you want to make sure and mend a lot and just get a real natural drift. And the biggest thing is just keep changing colors and sizes till you figure it out. I mostly run like single, you know, single beads with my clients so they don't get tangled up much. But What are some of your, like, what's your go-to colors? Like you have three colors you would shoot for. Uh, so I do a lot of pinks, but mostly red or orange. You know, okay. any shade, you know, brighter color, more of a, you know, bright fluorescent colors and then more opaques when the water's clear, but... There's some days where just a just a really bright bead for some reason, but like mottled red and any kind of the oranges are really consistent. Okay, that'll work for me. Except I'm gonna say Dave. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I wasn't gonna put it. <laughs> All right, well Dave makes his own um, soft beads, which are pretty darn amazing. He's got a whole bunch of different uh, colors and sizes, and then he also uh, inserts hard beads into the soft bead and i had no idea how uh, how cool this is yeah i mean i like to make my own stuff anyways like tying jigs or mm -hmm. you know plastic's just another part of it and then you can you can make any color you want it's pretty easy i mean it's just the the money it takes to buy the molds and everything but so i make some you know just Trying to split the colors so you have a profile but still a little bit of color to it but yeah. some especially the ones with the eggs or the beads in them i mean it looks like an eyed egg and then it has a little bit different color profile but i mean you can adjust to you know more of a a standard you know pearl pink to a reddish pink and you can adjust through different color patterns you know you can make like mottled red I mean, there's no end on the colors you can make. Yeah, and it, and it, it seems like it's, it sounds like it's pretty fun just to make them too, right? Yeah, <laughs> sit, in the, sit in the garage and drink beer and make beads. And my side of it, if I lose 30, 40 beads a day, it's a couple bucks, you know. Huh, nice. But it is a lot easier just to buy them. You don't have all the extra cost, but it, the fun side of it is to catch fish on something you've made. Nick, All what right. are we on here, brother? Well, I'm using the third rig, and it's just the simple jig, straight 10-pound test mono and a small float, and uh, spent the day kind of, you know, <laughs> tangling up, casting into trees, having a hard time, and finally got uh -oh. lucky here and uh, hooked something. What do we got? What do we got? Where's he at? Up, oh. up, oh. up, oh. up, oh. up. Oh. Rod up. In the glare, keep that rod tip up. up. What have we told you about that? Yeah. As long as it's not six inches of muck like it was when I stepped out. He's trying to bite the raft. There we go. Nice tail, dude. Yeah. All right. in there 
Yeah, it's like a good fish. All right. Okay, so this is a nice little hatchery fish. It's already spawned. It's kind of heading back to the ocean, but always fun. Yeah. There we go. Nice. Still got nice shiny fish. It'll smoke. Okay. <laughs> there we All go. right. Off like a rocket. All right. Well done, All brother. Right. Good fun. Good job. Dave put us right into that one, didn't he? He said there's going to be one right off that stump, and that's where he was. All right. Nick's on another one. He's finding his stride. <laughs> Got a smile on his face. Yeah, yeah. look at that. It's been uh, changing colors, and it seems to have helped, maybe, or maybe you just got in front of some fish. So. Yep. yep. All right. Tim's letting him by. Yep, I'm letting him go by. <laughs> fish my favorite feed rig. All right. We could probably land him up here in the grass if you want to hop out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we could probably. Just want the end of my rod there, Nick, so you don't get over the top with her. All right, we got the whole clan out. Now it looks like you were clipping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. It's like another little downstreamer, but yeah, put up yeah. a nice fight. Yeah, it's good fun. fight. It's got leeches on it. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Pull it out and open. There we go, just like that. Yeah. Pink jig. Yeah, that's crazy. Want to eat one? Ooh, side dish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're wrapping up the day today. <laughs> we're, we're now we're in frame. <laughs> we're wrapping up the day. Uh, we did good. It was low water. Um, we did we did pretty good. We got a few on beads. Nick picked up a couple on jigs at the end. Uh, the only thing we didn't get them on today was uh, my drift gear, which is unusual. <laughs> I know. But uh, anyway, um, comment down below and let us know if you uh, if you think drift fishing isn't good in low water. We'd, we'd be curious to know what you think. And we want to thank Dave for taking us out today. That was awesome. We had a great time as usual. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. <laughs>